First thing I'm going to do is come in and make a short, abrupt taper. See how I made a little short taper on there? First thing I'm going to do is come in and make a short, abrupt taper. See how I made a little short taper on there? I uh, went to the blade show and all electronics. I kind of actually shut the wind. I rushed to get some stuff made just to go because I already made the amendment. I should they offered, they offered, they called me and they found out about my son Clark. They be sitting there going, what's wrong with it? No, I'm going to go. It's just going to turn into a place for what? If you make your own place. Alright, now, I'm going to offset the part that's going to be the leaf. Starting off set. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Bring it out on the edge of the anvil and hit it like that. Because it just makes it easy. it's easier to work. And that's part of the reason, you know, there's different parts of the anvil used for different things. How y'all doing today? Doing good. Blessed as always. Where do you find your anvil at? Look, somebody looking for one. Where do you find your anvil at? I know somebody's looking for one. Um, one of the guys that I know through the Phoenix City Forge Group. Uh, you can check, look it up on the Facebook. All right, I'll do that. And ask some of the guys in there. They'll be able to help you out. All right, that sounds good. Sorry. I got, yeah, I got a buddy that uh, is starting to learn. My, I've never done it, but my grandfather and his dad were smiths. All right. <laughs> got a nice offset on that. Make it leak. Now I'm going to take and draw this out right here to create the part comes the stem. Then I'll flatten this out and this one's actually going to be a little bit longer broader leaf than this one. So far this morning I've done three inch round saw and it was another three inch round stock and this one was out of the half inch square stock. This one took the chisel lines to keep the ah. appearance of a leaf. This one I just left where I drew it out. And this one I came in with cross paint and angled some blows to give it more of a, like a little texture to look. Yeah. And then pig made from angle iron. First thing I'm going to do is come in and make a short, abrupt taper. Mm -hmm. 
See how I made that little short taper on there? out and this one's actually going to be a little bit longer broader leaf than this one. So far this morning I've done three inch round stop and there was another three inch round stop and this one was out of the half inch square stop. On this one I took the chisel and did the lines to keep the of a leaf. This one I just left where I drew it out. And this one I came in with cross paint, angled some blows to give it more of a, like a little texture to look. Yeah. And then pig made from angle iron. <laughs> Completely tough. Yeah. That's a tribute to my 900 pound board that I had to put down in the process. Oh. A buddy of mine's got a 200 pounder. She got a big one when that tornado comes to the place of the go. Slept in the bed with him. She got a 200 pounder. He was breed stock. <coughs> Watch right here. Yeah. Oh. The hot scale and stuff. Alright. Now to draw that out, I'm actually coming in with basically the toe of the hammer. out the other side for you. Now when I did the taper, I come out here and held it at an angle and hit with the toe of the hammer yeah. instead of the heel. Yeah. And that way, it creates the taper. So now I've got the offset, I've got this rough in, I'm going to draw this out a little bit more to thin it out more. <laughs> then I'll start to round it, then I'll make the leap. <laughs> I brought 
broke the brackets on this one of them low, so it won't, it won't sit on the stand properly. <laughs> Back yes, sir. And here's one I'm actually going to do a little bit longer. And then I'm going to do a large one. I predominantly do knife work. I have a good outlook. I, I do mostly knives, uh, camp axes, tomahawks, things like that. But I also come in and I do some of the stuff like this. Now, with the mild steel, you can work it when it starts to get that break. You'll work it a little bit. Still don't want to hit too hard because you cause some crack break. You know, high carbon steel is like you use a knife making tool making things like that. You can't work it when it gets that cold. Now it's still around 1500 degrees or so. That's too cold for a high carbon steel. Once you start coming out of that orange heat, and it starts getting dull and mad on the high carbon steel, it goes back to the fire. Um, I typically like to try to get it a nice yellow around just over 2000 degrees and start working the high carbon steel. Unless you're looking at something like a 52100 which has chromium in it. That you have to get to 2100 degrees just to start moving. If not, you're just going to wear yourself out trying to move it and create cracks. And... Yeah, work, <laughs> yep, try and work the stains. Yes, sir. And get it way high. Mm -hmm. And it moves nice and fast, then. I did that with a. Uh... Yep. That's actually uh, cooking carbon. Of it, and some of the metal itself is burned up on the outside. Because so even mild steel has some carbon in it because steel is iron with carbon. that I know through the Phoenix City Forge Group. Um, you can 
check, look it up on the Facebook. All right, I'll do that. And ask some of the guys in there. They'll be able to help you out. All right, that sounds good. Sorry. I got, yeah, I got a buddy that uh, is starting to learn. Like, I've never done it, but my grandfather and his dad were smiths. Got a nice offset on that. Now I'm going to take and draw this out right here to create the part that becomes the stem. Then I'll flatten this out. And this one's actually going to be a little bit longer, broadly, than this one. So far this morning, I've done various inch round saw. And another three inch, inch round stock and this one was out of the half inch square stock. On this one I took the chisel and did the little lines to give you the appearance of a leaf. This one I just left where I drew it out. And this one I came in with a cross beam and angled some blows to give it more of a, like a little texture to look. Yeah. And then Pig made from angle iron. <laughs> Completely tough. Yeah. That's a tribute to my 900 pound board that I had to put down for process. Oh. Buddy of mine's got a 200 pounder. She got a big one when that tornado comes in the place mark. Yep. Yeah. Slept in the bed with him. She got a 200 pounder. He was breed stock. <laughs> Watch right here. Oh, the hot scale and stuff. Alright. Now to draw that out, I'm actually coming in with basically the toe of the hammer. What you're doing with an anvil when you rotate back and forth between just the two sides. Anvil flattens out the other side for you. Now, when I did the taper, I come out here and held it at an angle and hit with the toe of the hammer yeah. instead of the heel. Yeah. And that way, it creates the taper. So now I've got the offset. And I've got this rough in. I'm gonna draw this out a little bit more to thin it out more. <laughs> then I'll start to round it. And then I'll make the leaf. <laughs> I broke the brackets on this morning and low, so it won't, it won't sit on the stand properly. You make the cap stand? Yes, sir. And here's one I'm actually going to do a little bit longer. And then I'm going to do a large one. You ever done a left three? You ever done a left three? I predominantly do knife work. I have a good outlook. Yeah, I, I do mostly knives, uh, camp axes, tomahawks, things like that. But I also come in and I do some of the stuff like this. Now, with the mild steel, you can work it when it starts to get that break. You still work it a little bit. Still don't want to hit too hard because you cause it to crack and break. Your high carbon steel is like you use a knife making tool making things like that. You can't work it when it gets that cold. Now it's still around 1500 degrees or so. That's too cold for a high carbon steel. Once you start coming out of that orange heat, and it starts getting dull and matte on the high carbon steel, it goes back to the fire. Um, I typically like to try to get it a nice yellow around just over 2,000 degrees and start working the high carbon steel. Unless you're looking at something like a 52100, which has chromium in it, that you have to get to 2,100 degrees just to start moving. If not, you're just going to wear yourself out trying to move it and create cracks in it. Yep, right, working stainless. Yes, sir. You got 
get him way huh? mm -hmm. And it moves nice and fast then. I did that with a... Uh, yep. That's actually uh, cooking carbon off of it. And some of the metal itself is burned up on the outside. Because even mild steel has some carbon in it because steel is iron with carbon mixed in it. Um, but in cast iron has some carbon in it, but it's less than 0.1. Yeah. Where your mild steel is all you're starting to go on 0.1 and above. And then your low carbon steel is like 10, 20, 10, 30. That's 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Those can be water hard. Your, your low, low carbon steel. Um, they're still not the best to try to make knives out of. If you're going to be, you, you work with I like, I, my go to is a 1075, 1080. Um, and when I do Damascus, I just use that, toss in a 15 and 20 for me, still for the difference in pattern. Um, both of those are good, you know, good quality steel for knife blades. I. No. No. No, I haven't cast obsidian. I, I've, uh, I do a sand mold and I've cast copper and it's aluminum. Casting obsidian is ridiculously difficult because it's no. literally volcanic glass. No. I'll nap and do some napping stuff or something like that. But I wouldn't try to melt it and cast it. Uh, Somebody tried to make a uh, obsidian short sword. That's out of scrap copper wire. Yeah, 
I spent three years hand cranking my coal for it. And as the, well, last year I had a river forge out here with a hand crank. My neighbor come by and he couldn't watch the demonstration because the coal's coming. So I said, well, I saw that. Well, the burner I actually ordered off of Amazon for $100. I wanted one that's all stainless. And when I adjust the regulator at all, I crank it up to about 20. I poured 12 minutes before I crank it up. I'll, I'll push up to about 2300 degrees inside the tank itself. And now all I'm doing is just rounding off what's going to be the stem. And then, we'll come in, flatten out, and make the leaf. I've never done any farrier work. Uh, I predominantly I make knives. I put an application in. They might call me one day. <laughs> if not, I like to watch that show. Uh, I find I find it interesting because I've, I've talked with some of the contestants that's been on it, like at the Blade Show and all. I, I got to talk to some of them. On. It's like they said. I mean, they're. High, high grade quality smiths. It's like he said, it just takes one little mistake. And you're working in a strange environment <laughs> with strange equipment around a lot of people that you're not accustomed to working around. One thing you gotta do is practice on you scrap stuff combine it together yep. to make a blade. Now to That's make the leaf, hard. stand it up on the end and Sides of the leaf to make a broader leaf. <laughs> then I'll thin that center out a little bit more. And then either I'll. Well, yeah, I can either do the little groove or I can do like this one, where if you'll notice the center's a little bit more pronounced. And I use the cross painted a slight angle to texture off on each side. It gives kind of the illusion of a. Of texturing of the leaf. Basically, these I use for keychains. Bend a little loop on the stem after I taper it down a little bit to a little bit finer point, and then throw it on the split ring, and there's a the keychain. That is made out of scrap copper wire. I'm right, blessed. It's good to see you. Yep. Copper's got some weight to it when you when you melt it down, and then. Uh, Pig out of a little piece of angle iron. Yep. That's a, I guess you could say, a commemorative to my 900 pound bull of Petey who gave me 60 pound hams. Alright, watch out. I'm going to hammer again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in.
Leon. City Forge Group. Uh, you can check, look it up on the Facebook. All right, I'll do that. And ask some of the guys in there. They'll be able to help you out. All right, that sounds good. Sorry. I got, yeah, I got a buddy that uh, is starting to learn. I've never done it, but my grandfather and his dad were Smiths. Got a nice offset on that. Now I'm gonna take and draw this out right here to create the part that becomes the stem. Then I'll flatten this out, and this one's actually gonna be a little bit longer, broadly, than this one. So far this morning I've done three inch round side. And it was another three inch, inch round stock, and this one was out of the half inch square stock. And this one took the chisel and did the lines to give you the appearance of the leaf. This one I just left where I drew it out. And this one I came in with a cross paint and angled some blows to give it more of a, like a little texture to look. Yeah. And then Pig made from angle iron. <laughs> Completely tough. Yeah. That's a tribute to my 900 pound board that I had to put down for the process. Oh. Buddy of mine's got a 200 pound. She got a big one that tornado comes in the place. She slept in the bed with him. She got a 200 pound. Peter was 
breed stock. <laughs> Watch right here. Yeah. Oh. The hot scale and stuff. coming in with basically the toe of the hammer. What you're doing with an animal when you rotate back and forth between just the two sides, The anvil flattens out the other side for you. Now when I did the taper, I come out here and held it at an angle and hit with the toe of the hammer yeah. instead of the heel. Yeah. And that way, it creates the taper. Now I've got the offset, I've got this rough in. I'm going to draw this out a little bit more to thin it out more. <laughs> then I'll start to round it, then I'll make the leap. <laughs> I broke the brackets on this one and there's a lot of so it won't, it won't sit on the stand properly. <laughs> yes, sir. And here's one I'm actually going to do a little bit longer. And then I'm going to do a large one. Give it a Give it a I predominantly do knife work. I have a good outlook. Yeah, I, I do mostly knives, uh, camp axes, tomahawks, things like that. But I also come in and I do some of the stuff like this. Now, with the mild steel, you can work it when it starts to get that great. You still work it a little bit. Still don't want to hit too hard because you cause the crack and break. You high carbon steel is like you use a knife making tool making things like that. You can't work it when it gets that cold. But now it's still around 1500 degrees or so. That's too cold for a high carbon steel. Once you start coming out of that orange heat, and it starts getting dull and mad on the high carbon steel, it goes back to the fire. Um, I typically like to try to get it a nice yellow, around just over 2,000 degrees, and start working the high carbon steel. Unless you're looking at something like a 52100, which has foamy in it, that you have to get to 2,100 degrees just to start moving. If not, you're just going to wear yourself out trying to move it and create cracks in it. Yep, right, work the stainless steel. Yes, sir. You got to get it way hot. Mm -hmm. And it moves nice and fast, then. I did that with a... Uh, yep. That's actually uh, cooking carbon off of it. And some of the metal itself is burned up on the outside. Because so even mild steel has some carbon in it because steel is iron with carbon mixed in it. Um, but in cast iron has some carbon in it, but it's less than 0 0.1. Yeah. Where your mild steel is all, you're starting to go on 0.1 and above. And then your low carbon steel is like 1020, 1030, that's 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Those can be water hard. Your, your low, low carbon steel. Um, they're still not the best to try to make knives out of. If you're going to be cute and you work with them. I like, I, my go to is a 1075, 1080. Um, and when I do Damascus, I just use that, toss in a 15 and 20 for a steel for the difference in pattern. Um, both of those are good, good quality steel for knife blades. I. No. no. No, I haven't cast obsidian. I, I've, uh, I do a sand mold and I've cast copper and aluminum 
passing the city and it's ridiculously difficult because it's no. literally volcanic glass. No. I'll nap. And do some napping and stuff or something like that. But I wouldn't try to melt the canvas. Uh, Somebody tried to make a uh, city short story. And about halfway through the casting, it's perfect for perfect ball, but he when it solidified, he tried to keep it up and instantly shattered. So we had to recast it. And my only main one that's semi good, but still wasn't working for me. And there's almost no way to buy some shit. See, I do. That's how the scrap copper works. Uh, 
I find I find it interesting because I've, I've talked with some of the contestants that's been on it, like at the Blade Show and all. I, I got to talk to some of them. It's like they said. I mean, they're high high grade quality Smiths. It's like he said. It just takes one little mistake, and you're working in a strange environment <laughs> with strange equipment around a lot of people that you're not accustomed to working with. One thing you got to do is practice on you scrap stuff. Yep. Now, to That's make the leaf, hard. stand it up on the end and <laughs> flap it out. Reheat. And then I'll turn over and use the cross beam and dry out the sides of the leaf to make a broader leaf. <laughs> then I'll thin that center out a little bit more. And then either I'll... Well, yeah, I can either do the little groove or I can do like this one where if you'll notice the center's a little bit more pronounced. And I use the cross painted a slight angle to texture off on each side. It gives kind of the illusion of a, a texturing of a leaf. Basically, these I use for kitchen. Bend a little loop on the stem after I taper it down a little bit to a little bit finer point, and then throw it on the split ring. And there's the keychain. That is made out of scrap copper wire. All right, brother. I'm blessed. It's good to see you. Yep. Copper's got some weight to it when you when you melt it down. And then. Uh, pig out of a little piece of angle iron. Yep. That's a, I guess you could say a commemorative to my 900 pound bull of Petey who gave me 60 pound hams. Alright, watch out. I'm going to hammer again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. <laughs> but 
say that's still a little warm, but it's cool enough to, well, for a little bit. It's still holding a good bit of heat. But yes, I mean, that's, now, believe it or not, those are both made out of the same thickness, the same piece of metal. Both of those are made out of ornaments, like an ornamental leaf keychain stuff and all. Um, I do S hooks, camp tripods, things like that. Um, I also hand forge knives. Uh, do small scale metal casting. You know, it's, it's, I enjoy it and it's interesting. It looks like well, I've made throws, camp axes, tomahawks, peace pipe tomahawks. Uh, you know, just different things because I don't know, there's something to me about actually being able to take, you know, a raw piece of steel, not really worried about the size, you know, the shape of it, and change it to what you want. That's like, these two were done out of 3 8 inch round, this piece of round, and these two were done out of this piece of half inch square stone. And then bracelets and things like that. Um, Little crosses that I'll punch a hole in, sure. use a bolt to go through it after I texture the head of the bolt. Yeah. Put an old piece of like driftwood or something. Sure. Sure. Wall decoration sure. things. Sure. But to me, a lot of people will see scrap metal, they'll take the scrap yard. I look and I see, well, what can I make out of that? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, like the pig, I saw a picture of one on Pinterest. And, you know, it looks like it was a piece of thing line. Literally the next day, me and my wife are out cleaning up the driveway, raking up leaves and stuff, and all I find a little scrap piece of thing line. So I gave it a shot. Not too bad. Um, I also make all my own drifts, punches, and things like that that I use for tooling. Uh, and to me, that's just something, I don't know, there's, there's certain bit of satisfaction that comes from being able to make your own sure, sure. Um, you know, it, it's it's kind of a, well I mean let's face it it's, it's not a commonly practiced trade even. You know, you've got professional farriers you've got artisan blacksmiths but when it comes to actual knife making blacksmiths are a small part of the people that make knives in this world about 98% of them have moved to stock them. So learning to the metallurgic aspects, uh, what temperature to work the metal out, how to move it properly, how to harden it temper properly to get a good quality knife that'll withstand what's being thrown out without breaking. It's you can get that from stock removal, but actually being able to take like I can take a piece of five eighths inch round and turn it into a, a, a knife, whether it be a clip point, drop point, whatever. Any type of knife I want that's, you know, inch, inch and a quarter wide, if not more, whatever length of stuff I want. Where with stock removal, kind of limited on what equipment you have. My first anvil was a one inch thick piece of steel plate set on top of a, of a log and I made my coal forge. So that lets you know you can use minimal tools. I mean, I've seen guys do it, digging a hole in the ground that they can put an airflow to, almost like a Dakota fire pit, and forge out of that. You take a look at the animals and stuff and all from Viking era and things along those lines. They weren't these big beefy animals, they were small animals. When you watch where I work, I work a very small piece of the animal. The nice thing about here is you got a party hole that you can put tooling in, put your hole for hold fast or something like that. Horn already built into it so you don't have to have a big or something over here to, to work on. But that's what I've tried to explain to people. You, know, you don't have to have the biggest, fanciest equipment. The big thing that matters is knowing how to work the metals, how to strike with a hammer, where I have to work on the anvil, and things like that. And 
so like, you know, I've got a young man that comes over that I'm working with to learn the basics and teaching him, you know, the key thing is, is, is your hammer technique. You know, when carpentry, we're back here with a hammer. Striking a small object. Well, with blacksmithing, I'm going to choke up on it so I got better control because I don't want to be all over the place. Going on flat, on a flat strike. Right. Sir. And what I'm looking at when I'm working steel on the anvil is I'm looking to hammer one spot and move the steel. Like when I was out here, I'm hammering here and moving the steel back and forth. So I'm not having to readjust every time. I'm striking the same spot every time, depending on what I'm doing. And then you move the steel accordingly. That simplifies it, and that cuts down on ending up with deep gouges in the metal where you're, you come off on the hammer blow and strike because you're chasing the metal. I don't know what I'm going to make this time. 